down to business, we got to deal with Beato, man. Like, Beato, yeah, is out of control. I, I do enjoy some of his interviews, but mostly the ones where he doesn't talk much and just, like, interviews someone cool. And it's not even really an interview. It's more like he has a big platform, so they come on. And, like, Steve Lukather. I watched Steve Lukather one. That was great. Uh, the, the, the Sting one was good because he made the classic Beato mistake where he's like, you know, oh, it was really cool how you do this and that. And Sting's like... I don't know anything about that, man. Like, I don't, he, like, he's like, I didn't know. Like, he, he thinks everyone knows more theory than they do and then is surprised when they don't know what the hell he's talking about or care. Uh, all right. So this is an insane matching. Again, it makes sense because they're all on tour together, but it's very funny to have them all do the interview together, I think. Uh, if you don't know, the I think it's called the Dream Sonic Tour. Dream Theater, Devin Townsend, and uh, Animals as Leaders. Uh, Tosin Abasi, where's Javier? Why don't they interview Javier Reyes? I know he's, I guess he's not. At we are on what we are calling the Dream Sonic Tour. Okay. Which is, uh, it's, it's our very own traveling prog metal festival. Carnage. It's three bands, man. It's not like, Animals as leaders. let's not get carried away. It's like, it's not a, like, it's three bands. Three bands is not a festival. It's a bill. It's a tour. Like, it's a tour. If you had more, like, Gigantour was like a traveling festival in a sense that it had like multiple stages sometimes. Although I think they only did that one or two years and then they were like, okay, that's limits the venues and probably costs a lot more. That's a, tra a traveling festival. You have three bands. As far as I know, is there even like an opener or is it these local openers? Like who's, cause I only know these three guys on it. Prague metal from Prague rock. So I, when I think about Prague rock, I picture the bands that are, were from the UK like during the seventies, like UK, for right? Sure. Like UK, like yes, mm -hmm. like Genesis. Genesis, Pink Floyd. Yep. But that's implying that uh, they're old, that they're the, which is kind of accurate. It's that's the last time they were that it was progressive. But there are like newer prog rock bands that aren't prog metal. They're just it's not progressive anymore. It's prog, and so that's the. But but I don't think we're gonna get into that differentiation. Played by metal kids. So to me, that fusion is prog metal. Okay, so is Rush a prog rock band, or do they have metal over any metal overtones? They definitely have metal overtones. Overtones, they but that's because they're proto metal. They're not. They're proto metal. Rush is before metal functionally exists. Like even the earliest metal bands. Um, I don't believe any band in the seventies was a metal band as we would define it now. It was all proto metal, and so Rush. They're proto metal moments, and then before the metal actually solidified uh, in essentially 1980, they went the other direction and were like, nah, and and started doing all the clean tone stuff and the, stayed in the rock zone. The rock zone. They stayed in the stayed out of the metal zone uh, once the 80s hit. Um, but yeah, it's proto metal. It's metal overtones, overtures leading up to it, but it is not effectively with uh music genres that and maybe it's just because i'm a guitar player and we're all guitar players so we'll all, all agree that the guitar sound kind of dictates the genre this is actually right? so it's like if we i agree playing, i very much agree like and i feel like that is the thing that people miss that is literally and doing the, same the sound and techniques that's literally what differentiates metal so, there are also maybe at this point some drum um drum sounds uh and tropes but really you could use a metal drum sound and play rock like it's really is it, it's a guitar based genre that is the def, def, that is the defining feature uh, very good John <laughs> other incarnation of that um <laughs> If the guitar guitar tone has a lot of distortion and gain and sounds more metal, then it brings it to the metal thing. If it's kind of more thank like you, mid thank you, JP. Road. Like if you were doing gent <laughs> without <laughs> distortion, yeah. Well, what would it be? That's a good question. I think it still work. I think it's the intent as well too. But right. it's it's interesting you say that because wait, gent without distortion. Um, depending on the the gem in, but arguably uh, jazz. That's because Meshuga is hard jazz. So really, gent without distortion, uh, you get you get jazz or so, something some kind of like really avant kind of jazz. The guitar <laughs> leads the direction of the genre. That's that's how I'm looking at it. You know, if I think about Black Sabbath, mm -hmm. okay, now they didn't have incredibly distorted guitars really 
that's because the technology did not yet exist, Beato. The technology followed the guys playing it who wanted it and needed the gain. And this, it didn't, it, it, it doesn't exist until 1980. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's, uh, uh, yeah, no, right. They had to invent it. But by 1980, guess what? They did? Tony Iommi invented all this shit. Beato, man. We need to, we need like a scorecard when Beato says some obvious dumb shit. But you would say Black Sabbath is definitely a metal band. Absolutely. Except that's because they invented and the earliest examples of it will not necessarily have all of the features of where it eventually ends up when it is fully understood as a style of music. Because classification always comes later. It does, except for like Jen, the, that's because that's the internet. But even that, Meshuggah had been around for over a decade when, uh, and doing that for over a decade when Gent came around. It was still a, uh, Meshuggah was not called Gent when they were inventing the, the gentiness of the time. They were most accurately a technical death metal band. Beato, man. Beato just manages to know so much theory and yet avoid so much musical understanding diminish fits and things yeah. like that in like country song it's so interesting because i feel like you did some stuff with um i saw your your live performance in la and you were talking about some soundtrack stuff minor second intervals and how they're evocative and musical features oh my god we're actually going to talk about uh musical features and not just like it's a feel i mean i guess this is the right crowd except for devin devin's off in space he's gonna keep saying like it's what you know it's what you really feel man i mean like listen devin <laughs> Go play your little serrated picks. That's why I've always liked metal, because there's a the whole part of the emotional experience that seems to be cut off from pop music. You know why I like heavy metal is because it's it's really heavy and uh and it's it's about wizards demons and uh all kinds of stuff. I think it comes down to sensitivity. I think a lot of times people who get into types of music that oh, damn it, Devin. be confrontational or really intense are maybe wired to perceive their environment in a way that's more hyper sensitive to stimulus. And so the best way to represent that is through a, through a, like a, a musical color that can sort of plumb those depths. I think it's actually kind of a disservice. I've always felt this way towards heavy music to try and categorize it in any sense and, and progressive as well. Because if you look at the word progressive just in a literal sense, it makes sense that progressive metal can finally, in a way, be able to be more explorative because progressive rock seemed to have very clear-cut parameters is what you can. Yeah, but it didn't when it started. Like, that's, it, that's the point. That's, it was progressive in the 70s, and then after that, it became prog. It became a genre defined by the features the previous artists had done. But initially, it was bands trying to combine classical music and jazz with rock and uh, and and doing and being as artistic as the, that was but like you look at elp yes rush but even rush is like almost second generation because they were already following uh yes and genesis and genesis is the early one but like there's differences in the early bands but similarities because they came out at the same time like that's how it works and like oh now we can finally experiment with heavy with progressive are you out of your mind? You can't. You ain't experimenting with shit, Devin. You stopped experimenting in like the nineties. I I don't want to hear it from Devin. You can experiment with your serrated picks. Is ridiculous. Oh my god, so backwards. Like, the, yes, that is my literal complaint with Prague. Is that it is not it, it, not experimenting with shit. You're just like, oh, we, we I, that, let's do a riff in seven four. There's been a lot of riffs in seven four. Why is this one interesting? It's probably not. Do 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 do. That's the diddly doos. You gotta prog is diddly doos, and that's it. Diddly doos and unnecessary pretense. You gotta label stuff excessively. Uh, all your song titles in Latin, as many uh, like chapter markers and then subdivisions of them and subsections and movements, uh, with no musical organization, just just making up titles for stuff, and then it doesn't matter. None of the rest of that shit matters, Devin. Which is exactly also what Devin's pretty much been doing. Symphony about dicks. So if you look at, in my opinion, metal is like a dynamic that you could adhere to any type of music. It's just a color rather than, you know, about a color? You mean like a timbre? Like the sound of the fucking guitar like JP was saying? Man, he's just he's turning all of this. Evan is making this conversation dumber. 
like uh or less uh useful less accurate credit to jp and tosin because tosin i know has his moments of like i'm reinventing the you're not reinventing the guitar bro like you 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 followed a useful trend uh and then copied some other people's guitars and now you're just making weird stuff that looks funny but does the same thing like sometimes you go to like a broadway show or something and it's supposed to be like a heavy section 100 <laughs> percent. it's not yeah they're playing the right notes posers this is true actually this was the problem with oh man the the nail on the head the bat out of hell musical um jim steinman songs and like jim steinman isn't a metal guy it's rock it may have like maybe little proto metal moments but it's definitely rock with like a theatrical flair the bad out of hell musical was so like softened even in the rock parts like we've heard all these songs done in a sort of uh intense aggressive way as much as they could be and then the music was like just like took all that away and so like he's got such a good point and there's so many rock musicals now that yeah it comes off so again i the real problem, though, with the, the Jim Simon musical is that uh, the brass overpowered, uh, I believe it, this was, my, this was my theory, my thesis on my whole uh, review of it just going off the soundtrack, uh, is that the brass uh, overpowered the guitar because of the, the sort of competing uh, frequency range and timbres, and the end result with all the orchestral stuff uh, that is required by um uh is is uh by union reg by broadway union regulations although you know so I, i'm in favor of the broadway union regulations and you don't necessarily have to like mix it like it's not in those regulations that you have to hear the bra all of the brass more than the guitar and so they mixed it like a broadway show and they didn't realize the importance of the rock elements and so it lost that edge uh, so yeah, man, I, this is like, I've seen some JP interviews where I was just like, uh, I can, uh, like, but I appreciate him here. Maybe it's in contrast to Devin, uh, Tosin right now, uh, are coming, are, are coming off real good to me because I just, at least like, they sound sane. They sound so much saner than I expected. Devin has gone the other direction and he's, uh, he's in the clouds. He's, it's just a feeling, man. Heavy metals, like he almost, like he said, it's a color and he says it's about sensitivity, but I was expecting him to just, if he actually says it's a feeling, you know, and somebody gotta, gotta break into the Toto song. So I always think it's the intent. I think yeah, that's what yeah. defines, yeah. uh, heavy music in general it's like what is your intent on an emotional oh it's the intent you, you know what cheap. man there's so many bands right now who intend on heavy metal like they're like uh this is this is my other big pet peeve lately is uh artists who are like metal adjacent there's no metal happening they're metal adjacent or like there's one little moment like on one song and so people are like you're in the club uh and because we're because we're not gatekeeping anymore and like uh which is fine but they're like they wear leather jackets and they like metal and then you're like, oh, so is there's like some metal influence on the music. It's like, not really, but their intent, the, the intent is there. Can music be progressive if it doesn't have time signature changes? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Another thing about using odd time signatures. The, the, the time signatures don't make it progressive at all anymore because that's been thoroughly done. So there's, it's like, there's a certain amount of stuff that hasn't been done in combination with other stuff like time signatures had been out like in say uh jazz or classical music that has happened but then in in, in progressive rock and metal it's like there is a certain amount of time there are still new ways to do it or approach it and literally the dream theater is exactly as he described it's that you took that thing that rush was already doing and combined it with stuff like a metal band would do and and half of that is just the tone but then some of it is techniques and then voila that's why, like, they, they just kept doing the thing. That's their whole thing. Even Meshuggah doesn't actually play in unusual time signatures or meters most of the time. It's mostly about polyrhythms. It mostly can come back to a 4-4, four, four, but with a lot of really interesting syncopation going on in between the beats. And that almost uh, brings it closer to, like, the kind of uh, syncopation and uh, polyrhythms in, like, the Purdy Shuffle, for instance. And so it comes back, it's all, again, Meshuggah, hard jazz. And so, but because that hadn't been done because you'd gotten the rigid time signatures, like again, the classic, the, like the, the diddly doos, the rush riff, like Dream Theater kept doing that shit for like a couple decades. 
And so then it's like, well, where do you go? And then it's like, uh, and then the whole gent genre is taking that thing from Meshuggah of it doesn't necessarily have to be, it could be in a weird meter, but it's more about finding those rhythms that aren't easily expressed by just playing something in a seven or a five. And uh, so... It's another part of progressive metal is that it uses rhythmic dissonance. Yeah. Yeah, it makes me think of... It's interesting. Tension and release, yeah. but rhythmic tension and release. It's also more like, I've always looked at it that it's, it's more, a little more natural. Because everything that we do is in odd time, like the way we speak, the way we walk, the way we live life. That's cool. Like, to, 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 like to yeah. walk. Kind of moves more, to the beat of jazz. Sounds it's turning into the uh, Crashmore <laughs> Santa Claus interview. <laughs> it's kind of a cosmic gumbo. <laughs> Scalar <laughs> fragments. You know, music mm. is math. Mm. There is this sort of like structure. That is true. It, but not Man. That. Yeah. Tos but I gotta say, Tosin. And JP, they're really, really going up a notch in my book. I, it's weird because I don't, is it, what is it about Beato? Because like, he, it's not like he asks great questions. In fact, I would argue he asks very dumb questions, but he gets good interviews maybe because, I don't know, maybe people are just like, oh, let me, let me, I'm going to explain to this idiot. Listen, music is math and, uh, and that's true. And it's like, I've got to explain this Beato guy because he's a YouTube, YouTuber. YouTube will rot your brain. Um, so I learned some theory, but it was really like a crash course, like a one year thing. Hmm. So I'm not as deep as one could be. But it helps. But you know modes and things like that, Tosa. If you were to say mixolydian in a flat six or something, you'll... Yeah, because I learned the, the, the formulas to the stuff. Yeah. Which started to actually... But you have those... That's, that you have. that's it, man. That's most of the theory. If you learn the formulas and the patterns, you don't need... Like, that's why so much theory is redundant and not useful, because if you're missing... If you learn the underlying patterns of everything, it becomes a lot simpler and it's not such a big deal. Oh, and that's the I that's my favorite part of any Beato interview is when they tell Beato he's wrong about because he, he here we go again. Like he's just trying like I mean it's interesting. Uh very interesting of Tosin also to downplay his knowledge. Uh, but also it makes perfect sense. Cause like the stuff that he does, it makes perfect sense. Like he's really into the mathematical aspect of it. He does a lot of interesting rhythms, interesting note groupings, but like you don't, it doesn't take a million years to learn that. Like I remember before I even did any music school, uh, I read a thing by Steve Vai about unusual note groupings and you understand the basic concept. It's you fit a certain number of notes within a certain beat, within like a certain, um, like uh, for example, uh, like a triplet within a quarter note, right? Is you take that amount of time, which is a quarter of a measure, one beat, assuming you're in a four time, and you play three notes in that amount of time. That's, there you go. That's, uh, or if, like if you're doing weirder groupings, like a, like, a, like a five or a seven, it's the same concept. Five over what? Seven over what? You know? Um, and it's complex. It can get complicated, but the concept isn't, that complicated and then you just gotta practice uh, under doing stuff with it and you understand it better and it takes less effort to approach it and so Tosin does the thing he does the thing he's into and he's so good at it because that's the thing he does but that's also why he doesn't do other things that I'm more into and that's fine is why I, I'm not as into animals as leaders Beato's like you know you don't you, you don't know all the theory you don't know because like Beato spends all his time talking about super deep jazz theory and what and he and he's a youtuber he doesn't produce anything that like culminates from it because he's just he's just jerking it to theory and devin's never been that deep in it like he's he plays all his ridiculous open or like drop tunings and stuff so he can play with one finger and like he knows how to play and he has a, like he's he has his moments but it's never been that complicated. That's one reason I didn't get into Devin that much at first, too, because I was like, oh, this is a big time prod guy. Although when I first got into Devin Townsend, he was in his, um, uh, well, I think uh, he was still doing strapping, but on and off. And his solo stuff was less known, much more niche. You know, now I don't know what the f he thinks he's doing, exp what experiments he thinks he's doing. Uh, again, like that's why I know that like his whole like symphony million dollar symphony thing is almost guaranteed to be terrible because that's not the thing he understands 
and neither would Tosin. Like they're not studying symphonies. They're not studying symphony forms or like exist. Like the point is something's been done a bunch and you don't understand it. And you try to do that thing. You're likely to just repeat something that someone has done and probably worse because they were at least probably trying to do that. And all the classical composers were just studying symphonies and sonata form. And like, there's a clear structure. It's like, there's a whole symphonies uh, up until a point, had almost as a sort of predictable structure, although with a lot more room for variation within it, as like a song does, right? What we think of as a song is a verse, a chorus, maybe a bridge. And you can get crazy with that, but most prog bands, it's really still ends up uh, mapping onto that form. And that's fine. That's the actually point. That's better to understand what you're really doing and how far uh, you're, you're really taking it. Oh. I have a term that I've been thinking about uh -oh. what I call it like the tutorial generation that mm. we're in right now with young kids that mm. are what? that can learn anything on through YouTube oh, yeah. or whatever, Instagram, where people teach things and they Except they can't. Um, they can't. And like people tell me all the time how they try to find things on YouTube and most of the videos are bad. Uh I literally in, in my day job get that for like I can't change a guitar string and and, and they're like the literally leave you, I know you're supposed to be able to go on YouTube but I do and the videos are bad and it turns out that goes across the board and there's bits of stuff in there and there are obviously going to be people who will be able to figure it out and learn stuff from that but that's not uh there's more resources it doesn't change just people's ability to necessarily filter through them and arguably when there were less resources some of them were still bad because like there were, you know, if you're a famous guitar player, you get a video. How well can you teach it? Like the Ingve instructional videos are the classic example of this because it had a booklet with all the examples. So you, you don't have to necessarily be able to like pick out the notes he's playing, which a lot of them didn't. But then he wouldn't explain shit. He would just be like, uh, I like to play the linear line and here is the uh, harmonic minor. And he's like, okay, now, uh, here it is at uh, half speed. And you'd be like, what what, you, what, you, what the f***ing vein? He's like, all right, moving on. The quality of education is Beato. Beato doesn't understand. Like, I don't know if he... It's been an explosion, especially yeah. in guitar. Explosion. More than, I think, any other instrument. Probably guitar and bass, but because of the... Inner... No, uh, 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 computer-based samplers and uh, electronic music is much bigger than the guitar Beato. It's like Ableton, man. It's like that is an instrument and it is much more popular than the, the guitar. Look, I love the electric guitar. It is the best instrument, uh, if you ask me, of all time. However, like you could say synthesizers, but I don't think it's really necessarily synthesizers. And to some degree, you could say samplers, but it's really just the combination of those things and the ability to control the computer. A com the MacBook is the uh, hottest new musical instrument. And Beato is like so out of touch. It's, it's, well, that's why we watch because it's, it's hilarious. And I hope they tell me he's wrong more. Internet now, kids can learn and expand upon techniques of people. Like you used you to have to use what do you books. Think about that? Well, I, I think a lot of it has to do with emotional health. I think that technique is secondary to understand. And I, w yeah, right. When you were at your most mentally ill, Devin, that was your best work, which is terrible because that's not supposed to be the thing. The thing is supposed to be, no, you should get help with your mental health. You make better art, except that Devin didn't, he did the opposite. And I don't, yeah, he keeps doing this. He's, they're just like, you know, it's really, you know, you learn the theory. And, the, and then Devin's like, um, it's a color. It's a, yeah, he has that one thing on his mind. He has to, exact, no, and he always does too. And that's, it's weird because he's obsessed with it. And yet I don't think it's helping. And that's what concerned to me. And then his weird, like, serrated picks is just another, he's like, what? Why is this? He's like, I just, uh, for a year, I mailed my worn out picks to pick companies and they wouldn't make me like, yeah, no, that's a weird thing to do, bro. Like, I don't think, I think some of those companies were like, what does he want? I don't get it. You want us to like 3D print this? Like make a, that's what they should have done. Somebody should have just 3D printed a copy of his picks and he would have flipped out. It, like literally he wants a relic, uh, a road worn relic pick uh, Damn, replica. What sound makes you feel. And in order to be able to articulate that in a way that is 
resonant enough for other people to understand. You have to understand your own motivations. So I think that when we were and that's why up, I'm making so a million dollar symphony how about did they play dicks. Eruption? How does Ingve do alternate picking? What yeah, you? ask Ingve. It won't help. I, I used to work with this guy at a guitar store who was in a local, like a heavy a local band in Madison, and he would always, it's funny, he's talking about motivations, he'd be like, I kind of just want to hurt people with my music. Like, I want it to be heavy that they're like, ow, oh, why are you doing this? And I was like, that's, that's some motivation, pal. And this was perfectly with Devin's thing is like, because he said metal's all about intent, and if your intent is to harm people with heavy metal, it, it perfectly blends with my philosophy of uh starting shows with a mild hostility towards your audience if you're a metal band you'd be like listen up you you're gonna rock we're gonna like you're gonna rock your faces off. like like that's not a thing that you should like don't rock please don't rock my face off i need i need my face i need it tomorrow for people to recognize me and it's like we're gonna melt it off and it's like that's it's very aggressive say practical purpose you mean actually writing songs yeah or yes but also Oh, no. I've often thought of oh, no. the modes as just being uh, equivalent to certain frames of mind. Mm -hmm. And if you, are, if you are emotionally not mature enough to have experienced those things, <laughs> you're going to have this toolkit with nothing to sort of apply uh, it to. Before I... Uh, if you're not divorced enough to appreciate the Locrian mode, then <laughs> after a certain amount of therapy, one can begin to, to start to play the Lydia. Like, what? He just has to find the most insane, like, very disconnected... Uh, don't even think about Lydian skills if you haven't backpacked Southeast Asia. Exactly. He's just like, you gotta, you need the experience to really, to to know what a sharp fifth means to, to your heart, I guess. I don't, man, Devin just, it's like, uh, I expected this interview to be kind of all over the place with a little bit of ridiculousness uh, from each of them. But honestly, instead... JP has been my rock. He's been saying like classic truths as if I was watching the rock discipline video. Tosin's been very reasonable uh, talking about like his approaches, but he has not once said that he's trying to reinvent the guitar uh, or anything like that. And Devin is out of his mind. It perfectly tracks with his picks and his sudden like, uh, loophole uh kiesel endorsement wow yeah, yeah. that's yeah. wow you know thinking back to when we we're all younger trying to learn the journey <laughs> yeah. was yeah. way different <laughs> like when i picture yeah there's like some truth or you could find some truth to what he's saying but uh but 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 not really he takes it a step further to where you're like i don't that's not no i'm pretty sure it has to do with the intervals and the sound that they make and he's like yeah but you can't really f it's like he's like trying to like uh meet the worst jazz guys in the end zone of pretentiousness like which makes it he was saying like earlier how he feels like which is a totally backwards view he feels that like prog can now finally prog metal can finally now begin to experiment like it, no that's the opposite of the way music history has worked and but it makes sense because like in a jazz guys you know you gotta you can't you can't feel lydian until you've experienced a certain level again i just I, he's he's not div i don't believe he's divorced but he's he just feels he feel he's divorced in his soul he should just pivot to divorce core like maybe he'd actually write some good stuff again if it was maybe he should get divorced i mean no i mean I'm, I'm, not wishing any uh, uh, ill uh, legal trouble on him. Yeah, right. Like JP's not hearing... the most cringe person in the room. And that's what this whole interview, I've been like, like he's making JP and Tosin sound so much. I mean, they're also doing a good job. Uh, maybe it's, I think maybe it's Beato. Maybe something about Beato brings this out. Cause like, like the Luke interview was really good, but mostly cause Beato didn't talk. Like when any, you can get someone to just go, he just says some dumb crap and they're like, Listen, uh, let me just tell you about this story about this one time. And you're like, that's much better. Forget about the thing Beato said. There's so many examples I can give. Let's say I just heard like a Boston song on the radio. Mm -hmm. 
Never very mind, likely occurrence. Like being able to play like that technique wise, but not having any understanding about harmonizing guitar and this. Why, when I play it, does it not sound like? Because <laughs> you didn't Boston. build your own no, because there's your own preamp, JP. On it. Yeah. And also, the dude, uh, like, made his own gear. He in, he made his own preamp, and so he got uh, an actual tone that nobody else had at the time. Again, as we were talking about earlier, and how Beato was like, even a, a metal band like Black Sabbath, for some reason. Uh, in the 70s, the tone didn't really sound like what we think of as metal tone. It's like, right, because the technology did not exist. G heavy metal, high gain technology had progressed through the 80s and 90s. And so, and similarly, the dude from Boston invented his own gear and recorded all their shit. And so not only does he know how to do a harmony, the harmony which other people were doing, uh, Jay Graydon very famously put a lot of sweet guitar harmonies on stuff in the 80s and um but yeah he made his own preamps and shit um and so he got that tone and then layered it and so yeah it's like multiple layers to what you got to work out to to get that uh or you just got to feel it it's uh i'm just waiting for debbie to say it's a feeling because <clears throat> you we were talking about different um stages of what's available like you know his generation, you had to like slow down a record. Uh, I had tabs, which at the time people were like, it's amazing. You can learn anything with tabs. Same as Beato's bullshit attitude about YouTube. But most of the tabs were wrong. So similarly, like slow your roll is not that exciting. It's exciting, but it's not as great as you think it is. Um, but I do, I had this exact same experience where I tried to learn like Led Zeppelin Souls and there was all the bends. Like, a, like the same kind of some of the stuff that like Luke does where you like bend to a note and then play that like note above like stuff like that. Like I took a long time to learn that kind of stuff. And so I couldn't learn those solos. It was actually much easier eventually to learn like like a dream theater solo where it was just like, oh, you just play all these notes and you just pick them real fast. And there was none of this like like no like l like lyrical phrasing, you know, as much. I mean, there's certain stuff, but. And by that point, I knew that shit anyway. But the point was early on, the the Jimmy Page Souls was just like it just looked like like a pentatonic scale like threw up on the page. That kind of stuff I couldn't learn from transcription for the longest time. That and I was. But it turns out it didn't matter because if you just played a bunch of vaguely similar pentatonic stuff, no one could tell. But now, as you said, it's all just like that. If you yeah. want to learn something. Here is exactly how you do it. You watch the person that you played watch, it, play it. You could either watch the actual person that played it. Yeah, that it helps. It helps, watch and it helps you other. get the more accurate information. Uh, because, again, even a lot of tabs were wrong. A lot of uh, professional licensed transcriptions were wrong because uh, they would hire somebody to transcribe it. I know because I, I almost tried to do this for money, and then it, I found out, A, uh, I was very slow at transcribing. B, the money was bad. And C, I didn't like it. Uh, but I know people who, you know, out of music school, that's a good gig they would get is doing transcriptions like Hal Leonard or somebody. And they just send, they, they tell you what song to do and you transcribe it, you send it back and they get the like approval from the artist. But the, like, I know that like uh, Petrucci actually like signed off on a lot of Dream Theater transcriptions at some point like that was the whole thing and i think michael romeo might have done that with symphony x2 but that didn't used to happen like they never used to even consult them other than like can we print this and therefore pay you and they were going to be like yes like they weren't going to be like is it accurate like especially in a band like pearl jam or something I'm like send here's where to send the checks art of guitar maybe who goes over how wrong the tab but yeah exactly and that was the thing like i was in a rush tabs mailing list uh, in the 90s, and they would do their own transcriptions, and they were more accurate than uh, most of the, the you know, free-range ones. But on top of that, you'd have multiple guys transcribing the same song and then arguing over parts of them. And so it just made me realize, oh, it's, it's just, a lot of it's just wrong. Uh, and so there's always going to be some element of figuring shit out. Like, and even if you see someone play something, it doesn't always give you all the information. Because uh, a lot of time, people just go... They're just like, oh, it just looks like it looks like really easy when he does it. Like, yeah, okay. And is he gonna explain what he's doing? Like, you know, the Ingve video. Where he, the Ingve video is a lot of fun to watch, but it it didn't teach you a whole lot.
other people break it. There's down a lot of instructional it, YouTube videos that, that are just are also bad, bad use. lessons, bad. Yeah. Oh, and and people trying to over teach. That's the big one. People selling lesson programs, but their new system. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to name them, but I could. But there's like most of them, not even counting the Beato book, which doesn't even try that hard. The Beato book's just like here is the same collection of skills and modes and chords and everything, and just all printed out. But like they'll try to like make up a new system for learning scales, and it's like you don't have to do that. Like I understand trying to like point out underlying patterns to people, but like you're just making it like here are the scale fragments and you put them together. Like, yeah, okay, you're making it more complicated. Like, don't make the music theory more complicated, which is what Beato loves to do. We've had the good fortune to work with a bunch of orchestras recently. And I've had- Oh no, he's doing the symphony music about dicks. Over the past couple of years, just so I can have a dialogue in a way that I'm able to save time. <laughs> because at first we did this project- Devin Townsend's gonna be canceled for well, talking about dicks to his orchestra. Intro passage is supposed to be- Not appropriate. A butterfly that lands progressively slower from leaf to leaf. And so it's got this blink thing. So there's gotta be like the pickles is, up there and you gotta have- It sounds like uh, uh, I had lunch with some girl from my theory class and she told me about her like A plus music theory paper, which was basically the piece transforms from a caterpillar to a butterfly. And I was like, oh, I didn't know we were supposed to be that full of shit. Oh, okay, well shit, I'll, I'll try that next time. I was trying to like, explain functional music theory but oh no it's like, it's like a butterfly oh right so you know there you go the bells down there every time his feet land on the on the leaf and the guy's like really <laughs> <laughs> he's like well, what key is it and i'm like you know uh, brian wilson who hallucinated a lot too uh but uh, his music's more popular so <laughs> hand seconds like, a b c d e i think it's in f and then he plays i'm like no it's f sharp oh, mm -hmm. so at that point i started recognizing that i needed someone to help me interpret that language and you need angelo Badalamenti because david lynch has a very short book uh, which he reads himself but he has this very short chapter where he talks about how he works with angelo Badalamenti, and he's like uh i sit down at the piano with him and i i tell him what i want and i use my words and then he plays uh he tries to play my words and sometimes he plays very badly and i say no 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 angelo and then i change my words and then he plays and and sometimes it's better, but it's still a little bad. I say, no, 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 Angelo. And then I say, I, I, I change my words some more. And then eventually he plays something and I'm like, that's it, Angelo. And then he, he writes the rest of the music based off that one idea or whatever. And so I was like, this is both the greatest and worst way. Like, I would love to have a job like that where some guy, I'm just like, you just play something until he's like, that's it. And then you're like, all right, go away. And, but like, also, if it was anyone but David Lynch, you would just murder them. Like, you would be like, what did you say to me? Like, no, 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 Angel. And also, he's like, sometimes he plays very bad. I don't think he's playing badly. It's just he's not playing the thing you want that you have no musical language to describe. Much like Devin here. De Devin needs his, his Angelo, which ironically, though, he's supposed to be the Angelo Badalamenti. He's supposed to be the musician interpreting his words, but he can't because he's the wrong kind of musician for the thing he's trying to do which has also been done over several hundred years and has been like fully explored. But he doesn't understand that because he don't got no music education and uh, it's it's gonna be real bad. I have this shape. It uh, makes me feel like either a certain color or a certain shape or a certain sensation that then you can kind of manipulate and massage into a passage that puts across- a All right, now don't massage any of the people in the orchestra, Devin. Okay, they're already we talking. About, okay, maybe it's not about dicks anymore. Maybe it's about butterflies because that's a lot less likely to get them in trouble. But don't massage them. Okay. Different frame of mind. So it's like the process now is much more about. Well, how do you learn about your own frame of mind? How do you learn about your own? Or you could have just learned about music. You could have wrote it down, but you don't like that. That all of the language exists. You just refuse to learn it because you think that you need to like. Again, cross the a rainbow bridge and like receive it from the elves in, in your mind elves or whatever. And like, again, usually people use drugs for that kind of thing. And he's trying to be like less on drugs. And so 
Marjorie. Actually, that's why Keneally was amazing because he was able to. Mike Keneally plays uh, guitar yeah. in the uh, band. And, yeah. and Keneally is his bottle of mentee, which makes perfect sense. He's he's Mike Keneally. He's like great. Doing yeah. me a favor because he's a genius and and should be. In but he knows space. how music yeah. works. I I find really practical, in the sense that. The, the function of music becomes really vibratory. It's all about how these vibrations interact with Oh, he's literally each other. talking about vibrations. Come on, man. Yeah, the, the string vibrates. It's literally the air vibrates, and that's how you get sounds that turns into music. Like, 